Hello, everybody, and welcome to the live stream. This is Frank from Learning and Technology with Frank. Thank you so much for joining in and tuning in. Today, we're going to take a look at a topic. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that when I first started the channel, one of the videos that was really sort of my first hit video was on Microsoft Whiteboard which was a digital whiteboard that I demonstrated for a lot of folks that were kind of forced to go online teaching. Uh, you know, we all know we all know what happened a couple of years ago. But uh, during that time, a lot of people were struggling. They had to, to go online. And the Microsoft Digital Whiteboard was a really great tool in order for them to be able to communicate um, in, in lieu of having a, a traditional whiteboard. So welcome to the chat. We're going to go through and we're going to look at four different digital whiteboard products today uh, just to see some of the differences between them. There's been a lot of evolution in digital whiteboards. And I also want to encourage you to really think about how you might use a digital whiteboard in a in-person class. I've been using it for the past month or so, and I think it really makes a big difference with an in-person environment. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So welcome and uh, glad that you guys are here. And uh, hello, Terry Cooper, and uh, happy to see you here. So just a quick check, make sure audio is okay. Everybody's seeing me and all that sort of good stuff. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that's not working. So when we take a look at, at whiteboards, digital whiteboards, usually people will have one of their favorite ones will come to mind. Uh, common ones that you might be familiar with would be the Microsoft whiteboard which is a product by Microsoft. Uh, other ones that come to mind sometimes are Miro. So the Miro whiteboard environment is something that's used a lot. A lot of corporations use that. A lot of schools use that one. The other one that might come to mind would be the Explain Everything whiteboard. That's one that I did a recent video on where I was talking about some tablet devices as well. And then the Hey Hi whiteboard, which I've also done a video on. And that one there is really it's modified. It's become something a little bit different, and we're going to take a look at that as well. So when we take a look at the different types of um, whiteboards or digital whiteboards that we have, we have two different rough categories that they fall into. Um, and when I mean categories, in terms of how we use them, we have those whiteboard products that we install onto our systems, and those could be drawing programs or dedicated digital whiteboards. And then we have cloud-based digital whiteboards. Now, the advantage of a installed whiteboard is that it's with you and it's persistent. You're not dependent on a network connection in order for you to be able to use that. That's great if you want to, for example, project into a classroom uh, to the front of the screen. You're not dependent on a network connection. But the challenge that we have with that style of whiteboard is that the collaboration component is chat. We need a, we need a network in order to collaborate. So we have installed on-prem, and then we also have the cloud-based whiteboard, which does unlock our ability to collaborate. So you're going to see that Miro has a downloadable whiteboard that you can install on your system. Microsoft Whiteboard also has a downloadable component, but all of them generally shine or best when we're using them in a cloud-based environment. Now, when it comes to whiteboards, some of the things that I, you know, that I like to use is I have these here tablets. So this is an example of a Wacom tablet. The Wacom tablet is something that allows me to use a stylus. So everything that I write on here, I can then have on the whiteboard that I'm using. So I do find that this is extremely helpful when I'm working with a digital whiteboard. Now you'll notice that in my case, I also have a Surface here. So I have the Surface book that's got a touch screen as well. And I also have this here, which is a uh, XP pen. Uh, tablet, which allows me to use a stylus and write directly on the whiteboard. So no matter which type of whiteboard you want to use, you do want to have either a tablet, an external tablet, or a screen that you can write onto, or you want to be able to somehow have a stylus that you're using, as opposed to trying to draw with a mouse. That really kind of unlocks the potential of the whiteboard. That really makes it a lot easier for us to use it. So when we take a look at the different digital whiteboards, let's pop over to the screen here where we'll take a look at some of the digital whiteboards. 
Um, tonight, we're going to take a look at four different digital whiteboards. We're going to do a little bit of a compare and contrast between the whiteboards and look at how they could be effective in education. And I'm actually going to use a whiteboard to talk about whiteboards. Let's bring up the one that was, you know, one of the first ones that I used on my channel, which is the Microsoft whiteboard. We'll bring this one up first. And with the Microsoft whiteboard, what we have is it's gone through a number of different evolutions. You can see here that we have the ability to go in, add notes, text, shapes. You'll find that most whiteboards in their simplest sense all provide the same functionality. The difference is that they all have things that can make collaboration different or they all have features that might be preferable to one group or another. So hello, Elmer. Hello, Sharam. How are you doing? And um, yeah, just so you know, if you're if you're watching on LinkedIn or if you're watching on YouTube, I can see your comments. Unfortunately, Facebook, if you're commenting, I'm unable to see them uh, uh, live, but I still do appreciate any comments and such. So welcome, everybody. So when I when I look at a traditional whiteboard environment, we, we look at having some sort of way that we want to present. And typically, and you'll have to excuse my incredible drawing skills, but typically what we're doing is we'll be at the front of a class and we'll have a traditional whiteboard with whiteboard markers where we can convey ideas, we can write text on there, we can do all sorts of good stuff. There's nothing new about a physical whiteboard. We're familiar with that tool. With a digital whiteboard, what we're able to do is we're able to take that whiteboard and we're able to, instead of drawing on a screen at the front of the class, instead of drawing on a physical whiteboard, we're basically able to take that, we're able to digitize it, and now we can have an audience that's remote to us that are able to see whatever we're writing on the digital whiteboard is able to be seen by that audience at their computer. So every individual would have a computer maybe running a Zoom meeting, maybe running Teams, what have you, they're able to see that. And what I'm suggesting is that one of the things is that we were forced into this environment where we had to somehow convey information to students at a distance. And now we've returned back to the in-person teaching in many cases. But there is a good argument to be made that probably we want to try to have the best of both worlds. And for the best of both worlds, what we're really looking at here is we're looking at some sort of hybrid type of teaching where I can combine the best of being in front of a class and the best of being able to project the whiteboard directly onto their screens. One of the things that would be useful here that I've been doing since we've we've gone back to class is instead of projecting a, or instead of writing on a physical whiteboard, what I'm doing is I'm using the computer at the front of the classroom. I'm using digital whiteboard software like the one that I'm showing you right here and I'm connecting that up to the projector and projecting it to the front of the class. So it still looks as if I'm writing. So as I write here, everything that I write here is projected to the front of the class. But more to this point, what I'm able to do is my students who have their computers at their desk, instead of just being looking at the screen in front of them, so instead of just looking at the screen in front of them, and as we know, if you're at the back row of a classroom of a traditional row by row classroom, it can be hard to see the screen at the front. You've got some distance here. So you've got all the students at the front, they're seeing exactly what I'm physically putting on a physical whiteboard. But by using a digital whiteboard, I'm not only projecting it to the front of the room, but I can also have all of these students join the team meeting so that they are able to see what's at the front of the room directly on their computers. In addition to this, what we're able to do is let's say I have a student who's not feeling very well, has to attend to some sick children or whatever. What we can do there is they can now tune into that same meeting that's occurring in the classroom. And whatever I'm projecting here, I'm able to project to their computer at home or wherever they may be if they can't attend in person. Now, in my case, and I'm working on a video, so stay tuned on the channel for this. I'm doing a, a video right now on hybrid teaching. I also have the addition here of a three camera setup. So I have a three camera setup in my classroom. So I'm not only projecting the whiteboard onto their screen, but I'm also projecting camera setup of what they're doing in the classroom. So when I'm able to, just like here, I can switch between different cameras 
And then I can do this in the classroom, of course, with larger screens and stuff. So I hope that's interesting to you in terms of a use for the whiteboard. Let's take a look at some of the different whiteboard software. I've done everything here, all of this diagramming in Microsoft Whiteboard, which is one of the Microsoft, no, it is one of the whiteboard, digital whiteboarding products that I'm most familiar with because this was the first one that I used when we went into an online environment and I became quite familiar with it. It's quite simple in many ways. We do have collaboration features and I'm not going to go through absolutely every feature of all of the whiteboards we're going to talk about this evening. If you are interested in more features or a more detailed tutorial on any of them, let me know in the comments either now or let me know once you've watched the video. If you're watching this after the fact, let me know. I do have tutorials here on the channel for Microsoft Whiteboard pretty extensively. I have ones for explain everything moderately extensively, quite a bit for Hey Hi, but that's gone through some major changes and I could do Miro if you're interested. So underneath the whiteboard here, you can see that we can add notes into the whiteboard. We can go in and add text into the whiteboard if we wanna add text in here, put the text on here. So I could go, hello, typical, Hello world. There are some limitations to what we can do with the Microsoft whiteboard. There's limitations to every Microsoft or to every uh, whiteboard, digital whiteboard that we use. The question is, is this simple enough for me to use? And is this effective enough for me to communicate? We can do things like bring in different shapes. So if we're working, you know, with different shapes and such, we can bring those in. Uh, that's handy. We can put reactions onto certain things as well. So we can go and put a reaction. Oh, that's going to be the pen here. I'll just move it with the mouse. So we can put a reaction onto a specific object as well. This is a very simple uh, whiteboard. It allows me to have images. There's some templates that we can bring in as well. So you can bring in a template if you want to work with something like... Uh, uh, this is a great icebreaker activity. Two truths and one lie is a is a very familiar icebreaking activity. If you were here last week where we were talking about uh, different books that were useful for teaching, one of the books, um, well, actually it wasn't in the books. It was actually a chat GPT that I did where we said, uh, I, I put in, uh, can you give me some icebreaking activities for a class? So anyways, but you can see there's a number of different games and there's a whole bunch of different templates in there. We're not going to go through them all. You can put a document on here. Putting a document is, is very useful. What I'll do here is if I right click, I can clear the canvas just to keep things nice and clear. So we'll confirm that we're cleaning the canvas. I'll go into a document. Now I can go in and browse for a document that I might have. It'll automatically go to my documents. So I can go in here and choose different documents that I might have in here. I haven't really prepared a document, but I could bring in something like a PDF document. So we can go in and we can go to our teams here. We could say, for example, I have a camping equipment. I don't know if I have, I don't, I do not have a PDF in here, but you could then bring a PDF in here from one of your team's meetings. And then you could go in and you could mark it up and then remove those marks as well. Uh, you can bring video in here. So for example, I know that many of you probably are thinking, I would love to share some YouTube videos from learning and technology with Frank, with my students. You can bring it right onto a whiteboard. And I guess you could even like draw a mustache on me or something, but don't do that. Oh, you can draw a mustache on me. So this is an example of the Microsoft whiteboard. Very simple whiteboard, very accessible. And the nice thing about the Microsoft whiteboard is it also comes with a great price. It's free. It basically comes with your Microsoft Office subscription. So that becomes very compelling because it often has all of the tools we need. We can also go in and do different types of collaboration through sharing this whiteboard. So I can go into this whiteboard. I can specify, I can provide a link to it, and then you're able to come in and we could collaborate on this whiteboard as a team. Probably one of the whiteboards that a lot of people are familiar with, especially around collaboration and such, is the Miro whiteboard. And it would be interesting to know basically if there's a lot of people that use this, but you can see that a big thing with Miro is they have a huge number of templates so there's a lot of different templates and they also allow for the creation of community templates. So underneath community templates, you can see many people have created templates in here. 
So for example, uh, here's a triple diamond. I'm not familiar with this template, but just to show you, this is a Miro community template that someone has created. And this can provide a very compelling starting point for a lot of conversations. Again, even projecting this to the front of the room, if you see the complexity of this, this template here, this would be hard for a student to be able to see, if even if they were in the front row of a class. But if I shared the Miro template in Teams, which you can do, you can share the whiteboard in Teams, I could both have it projected to the front of the class as well as being shared through Teams. Students could actually collaborate on this template through their Teams meeting, both in class and outside of class, without having to walk to and from the physical whiteboard. So this is another advantage of a digital whiteboard where we can go in, we can set up the activities and such. Now, in this case here, like I said, I'm not familiar with this particular template, but you can see that I can share this out, right? So I can go in and right now I could share this out. I could present this as a template, so I could present it as a board. I could put it out as a smart meeting where we're all collaborating. And I, I cannot emphasize enough how this collaboration does not have to be at a distance. This collaboration could be in a room where we have the glass or the screen right in front of us and we're going in there. So if I go back to Miro, I'll just go back to the, to the main page here and we'll just do a blank board in here. So I'll go and do a blank board. Much like any digital uh, whiteboard that we might have, the Miro whiteboard, and you can see because I'm going through the internet right now, it's not super fast. It's not as fast as if it was a local application. But once we're actually working with it, we can go in and we can just choose uh, a Kanban is a very popular one. We'll use that. So when we use a pre-filled uh, Kanban in here. So here's an example where if I'm teaching software development, agile software development, I don't have to worry about drawing this out on the board. I don't have to worry about printing this out and, you know, giving out uh, handouts to everybody. I've got a nice conversation right here that's pre-populated for me where I can then discuss what's happening in terms of development. I can also go in down the side here. You can see that I've got the ability to move around. I can go in and I can add objects in here. That's just another template. We don't need to do that. I can add text in here. So if I put some text in here, I can go, you know, again, hello world. One of the things that's nice about some of the other products besides Microsoft whiteboard is that underneath here, I can choose different fonts in here. Microsoft is limited in that. I can go in and, and choose a lot more formatting here for the text. And then, you know, things like I can put post-it notes in here. I can do things like put shapes in here. I can do things like put lines in here to connect things. There's your typical pen that I have. So the pen will have both a marker pen, a highlighter, uh, different fills, uh, erasers, a lasso effect, different things that we can put in there. So I'll just do a regular pen in here, my typical scribble to demonstrate, and it goes on and on. So there, the, the Miro is probably, well, it's not probably, Miro is definitely more full featured than the Microsoft whiteboard, but it is also a subscription-based service to unlock all of the features, especially around the sharing. Now, you might want to check because a lot, I know a lot of academic institutions have academic subscriptions. And in fact, myself, this particular uh, subscription is, is by my employer. So this is something that is, is available to me. So again, we see another digital whiteboard. And one of the things that we also get with any digital whiteboard is as we work through the material, we also are creating an artifact. So this can then, once completed, be shared with our students so they can use this to study. So they can use this in order to, you know, and when I say students, it could be any audience. So this could be an audience, a corporate audience. This could be a team audience, a project planning group. But we wind up having all of these different um, whiteboards that we create. They We don't erase them. We don't have to grab an eraser, erase them and hope that somebody took a picture of them or hope that somebody remembered what was on there or took notes at their desk. We can give them the actual whiteboard that we worked on. And I think that's very powerful. So you see that we've got the very simple whiteboard of Microsoft whiteboard. We have a more complex tool such as Miro. That is a corporate type of environment. Some of the other alternatives we have here as well. We have Hey Hi. 
And quite early on, um, actually, you know what? I'll do. I'll wait for Hey Hi because it's got something special about it that's new. Let's first take a look at Explain Everything. So with Explain Everything, you can see once again, we have a blank canvas. We can use templates. So there's a number of different templates. You can see here that with Hey Hi, the templates tend to be a little different. Class activities, K to 8 activities, planning, data visualization, and seasonal activities. So this, as opposed to the more corporate environment of a Miro uh, whiteboard, you can see here that we have some very useful templates, but these are more education focused at this point, although certainly could be used with teams. Notice that this is intended to be an online meeting. So the whiteboard itself is the online meeting as opposed to being put into another meeting. And then, you know, here we can move things around. Uh, we can go in and use our pen here. So we could, you know, scratch out that label. I could use text in order to do that. But, you know, here's a great example of where I get a very quick Venn diagram. If I want to, you know, go through the concepts of a Venn diagram with the students, I can go ahead and do that. We can have a conversation around intersectional um, learning, for example, if I have, you know, you need to learn technology, you need to learn business, and you need to learn social skills. And together that will make you a superhuman in the world because you're technically and businessy and uh, socially very adept. That's the sweet spot. Or as we, as we call it when we're training students, this is where the unicorns live, right? So this is the unicorn spot. And, and uh, that's somebody who can balance technology, business and uh, social skills. So you can see, you know, there's an example. I'm not going to go through all of these because they're the same things that you would expect to see in any of the whiteboard products. Obviously a little more complex than Microsoft whiteboard because it has a lot of things. For example, with the text here as well, I can go in, I can put some text in here. So we put in, a, once again, my Everybody does hello world because it have old habits die hard. But if you go in here to this text here, you can go in the information box. You have the ability to do all sorts of things with what's called the inspector. Underneath here, you can arrange things, send forward, send back. You can duplicate it. You can work with the material here. If I go in and choose this text in here, so if I highlight all of this text, I can go into the different, go into the text here. I can go in, oh, I didn't highlight it, but you can go in and you can make modifications to the text in terms of, you can choose different fonts in here. You can go ahead and change the size of the font. So there's a lot of things you can do here. Once again, um, I'm not trying to be dismissive of the Microsoft whiteboard, especially because it's really that only that area of fonts and stuff, but a lot of the other whiteboard products have a lot more when it comes to things like formatting fonts and such. But once again, the Hey Hi, or sorry, this is Explain Everything. Once again, the Explain Everything software is a subscription-based model. It's actually not very expensive. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood for a single teacher of about $40 a year US, uh, $39.95. And so it's, it's not terribly expensive. So it might be something that you can get through PD funds or something. But, um, but again, it is a subscription-based model. The last one I want to look at is one called Explain Everything. Now, Explain Everything is quite interesting. Or sorry, Hey Hi. That was Explain Everything. The next one I want to look at is the Hey Hi software, which has actually gone in through a number of different evolutions. So Hey Hi has actually become more of a learning platform. So once again, the idea is that you know, this mimics the classroom where we have a board at the front of the class. The difference here is that this is shared out. You can see once again, I'm logged into here because Hey Hi was a sponsor for a video that I did some time ago. And um, not this one, no sponsors here because I'm talking about all the digital whiteboards, but they have this community wall. The premise here is that you create a meeting. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a meeting and this is where the costing comes in. So you can have a classroom meeting up to four, a lecture up to 12, a lecture up to 30, live stream up to 50. So you can see here that you can schedule a meeting. It's going to depend on the subscription level that you have as to what you're able to, to use here. So let's say, for example, I go a meeting of four. That's going to be, you know, four people collaborating on a whiteboard together uh, up to 12. In this case here, 
they, you know, and they can have a video call with the host. We'll just do the four meeting here, but you can see that you get more functionality as you increase the size. I'm just going to start the meeting. You can also schedule it. And what you'll get here is some meeting codes and an access code that you would share with participants. And then they would join in on here. So I'll go here and we'll go ahead and go to the meeting itself. And you'll see here that the meeting will now start. Gives me information about the meeting. I can do things like test my connectivity out to the web and such. I'll join this meeting and I will be deleting this meeting at the end. So if you're watching this now or watching later, you won't be able to join this meeting. Um, and you can see that it will open up the meeting for me. And again, it's the whiteboard idea here. This one is designed so that I'm going to use cameras and microphones in order to connect up. And you'll see that within the meeting, you'll actually see participants on the side. Now, this is only a four person meeting. So in this case here, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and choose some things that won't interfere with this live stream. So you can see, I'll just mute my microphone and I'll mute my camera here. But uh, if I've lost audio, let me know. <laughs> but underneath here, now we have the controls down here at the bottom and you can see it's the same suspects. So I can actually draw with touch if I want. And this is quite neat because I can take my phone and then I can scan this, this code and then use my phone in order to draw. So that saves having to have a stylus and such. But again, I, I tend to use a stylus. We have our pen here. So again, I can use the pen. If again, you hold, hold down on the pen, you can see oh, if you go in, you can, you can do modifications on the pen here. So there's all different types of modifications. I can go in and change the color, the thickness of the pen. I can go in and I can use a laser or that's a highlighter. I can go in and use a laser pointer if I'm pointing out different things. So all of the things that you would expect from any whiteboard product are here, but this takes the form of more of a meeting environment and a learning platform. And when it comes to, to this environment, I won't go through everything here, but you can go back to the, I'll close down this meeting. So we'll go end the meeting for everybody. But you can see that with the uh, Hey Hi software here, go back to the home page, grab that there. And uh, here we go. You can see that it's meeting is just one aspect of how you would use this software. They also have an assessment section where I can build assessments and deliver assessments. So this is sort of a product that might be competing a little bit more with a, uh, a sort of an enhanced Zoom or a Google Sheets, or sorry, not Google Sheets, a Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams, but really aimed more at, you know, building out worksheets, assessments, lessons, building a classroom that the students then come into, of which, of course, the whiteboard is a huge aspect of it. So having a meeting and setting up that meeting is a huge aspect of it. But you can also do things like create a library of documents. You can set up tutorials in here. So this becomes a little bit more complex of, of a whiteboard here. So these are the different types of whiteboards and digital whiteboards that we can have. The goal is to choose a whiteboard that you're comfortable with. Everything from a more simple environment that's going to be added into something like Teams or shared as part of a classroom experience, like the Microsoft whiteboard, something that's more aimed at corporate type teams or project teams certainly can be used in a classroom. These ones tend to be, you know, the Miro tends to be a little more complex and a little more full featured, something that that's aimed very much at a, you know, K to eight or a classroom environment can be used in any education or presentation setting. But this one here really does have, if we go back to our projects here, you can see that a lot of the templates and such here are really sort of geared towards, um, you know, specific, you can see I've done some music teaching here. Well, I haven't done music teaching. I'm not a musician myself, but the, um, but I was showing how you could do musical uh, teaching through a template that had the music here. But you can see that with the explain everything, there's templates for K to eight. There's, you know, the ability to, you know, create a, a meeting. But the templates here, unlike Miro, these templates tend to be more class activities, K to eight subject areas, gets you started on different things, you know, like a math pizza, you know, that's not going to really fly with, with certain, um, you know, in a corporate environment. It's cool though. 
Like who would who wouldn't like uh, who wouldn't like a math pizza? Anyways, you can see it's a pretty nice template though. It's pretty pretty. And then we also have you know tools that like the Hey Hi, which are now looking to expand far beyond just being a whiteboard meeting and start working with a um, more of an entire learning system as opposed to just a whiteboard. So that's kind of what we wanted to look at tonight. I hope that what we've been able to show you is a little bit of the choices that we have when we come to digital whiteboards. And even more to the point, I hope that I've shown you how these tools all have different features, but at their essence, they're a way of communicating. And what we really want to be able to do is instead of going to a physical whiteboard, we're going to project a digital whiteboard into our classroom. We're going to draw on the digital whiteboard for everybody that's present that can look and see what's happening at the front of the room. We're going to share the digital whiteboard to the desktops of the people that are in the classroom. And we're going to be able to go in and we're going to be able to create an environment where people outside of the classroom can also come in and join that meeting, whether we're distributing it through sharing of a code that lets them join the meeting, or whether we're sharing it through a Teams or a Zoom or other type of communication software. So I hope this was interesting for you. It's been a while since I've done a whiteboard type of tutorial. Certainly this isn't a whiteboard tutorial. It's more of a whiteboard overview, a digital whiteboard overview. And I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts about how you might use digital whiteboards in an in-person environment, in a hybrid environment, and in a purely digital environment. Again, as always, if you have any questions about any of the whiteboard products, how to incorporate them into your presentation and your learning, let me know. And we'll see you next week for another live stream. I'm currently waiting for some items to arrive from some different companies that have decided to provide me with some interesting resources. We're going to take a look next week on how we can use physical cards in order to spark creativity, critical thinking, storytelling and workshop techniques so make sure to set your calendars it'll be next week sunday at 605 we're going to take a look at some creative techniques of using some analog tools in order to create some excitement in our classrooms as well and our presentations and training that we might do corporately as well see you guys next week it was great for you guys to be here if you're watching this after the broadcast comment down below and we'll see you next week for the analog using decks of cards. That's the hint there uh, in our teaching and our training. Talk to you next week. Take care, everyone.